Angry rail passengers are demanding compensation from National Express East Anglia after they spent seven hours overnight on a train. The journey from London to Norwich should have taken just two hours. Many were football fans returning from Norwich City's match at Brentford. It's been 16 years since City fans have returned from a game with jet lag. Back then, the opponents were Milan. This time, it was Brentford. Somebody on the train was saying, we want one back. <laughs> that. Then someone a bit older wanted to uh, renationalising the trains and all that kind of stuff. But it was like anything but National Express, really. <laughs> Just a uh, real shambles. Matt left London last night at 11.30. 35 minutes later, the train broke down at Ingotston, where it stayed for nearly three hours. Just beyond Colchester, at around a quarter to four, it juddered to a halt a second time. It limped back to Colchester, where it stayed until five past five. It stopped at Stowmarket just after six, and finally arrived in Norwich at 6.35. Brentford fans Roger Dickinson and son Laurie got off at Stowmarket. It was something like Victor Meldrew's phrase at time, you know, I don't believe this, you know, just what was going on. And uh, I could hear a wife telling her husband, oh, calm down, you know, there's nothing we can do about it, just try and get some sleep. It should not take that long. In a statement, National Express East Anglia told us this must have been a very frustrating and difficult journey for everyone and in addition to the compensation that customers can claim for such a delay, we will also be offering further recompense in view of the extensive delay and inconvenience caused. Sadly, there'll be no recompense for the inconvenience caused by Brentford's frontman. Carol Bundock, BBC Look East. Well, last night we told you about the oil tankers queuing up off the coast of Suffolk to fill up their tanks at sea. It's the only place in England they're allowed to do it. Now, many local businesses are taking the opportunity to do business with them. Off the Suffolk coast today, a community of huge oil tankers at anchor. Their arrival offshore, where they transfer oil ship to ship, has been felt onshore too. In Great Yarmouth, this company's cranes have been loading supply vessels for the tankers. It's generating up to £2,000 of new business every week. We lift the fenders into the water, uh, pipes and ropes and different things onto the vessels as required, and um, then we may do this uh, three, four times a week. At Alton Broad, another beneficiary. One from four o'clock in the morning tomorrow morning, Hackford Hotel, Bell at Norwich Airport, yeah? John Locke's taxi firm transports replacement crews for the oil tankers to and from airports. Obviously they can only stay on their ships for so often and bring new crew out, take ones back. Most of them normally fly India, places like that, all over really. And today on the quayside in Lowestoft, a new crew arrived. It has approximately 25 to 30 tankers. They've all got requirements which the Port of Lowestoft is providing. Uh, the service launch is running daily and they're also servicing everything they need from basic you know, food provisions through to newspapers and uh, because of the anchorage we have here at Southwold, then this is obviously becoming a, a key area for them to come to. Some may question the wisdom of tankers transferring huge amounts of oil just a few miles off our coast, but many local businesses are welcoming them with open arms. Richard Daniel, BBC Look East, Lowestoft. Now, some of you contacted us after our story last night. Melvin Robinson is a local fisherman. He says the ships doing the refuelling between Lowestoft and Southwold are taking up their summer fishing grounds, and Yarmouth Coast Guard has refused to do anything about it. Kevin Flanagan told us he worked at sea as a sailor and on tankers. He says it's safer to do the refuelling this way than do it in port. Angela Ford said if anything happened during this refuelling, it wouldn't just affect the coastline, it would make the whole area a ghost town. And Professor Kirk from Cranfield University says it is safe to do the refuelling at the point reported, but in fine weather only. To do it in high seas would be dangerous. Thank you to everybody who got in touch. A couple who spent half a million pounds converting a barn in Norfolk have won an appeal to make it their permanent home. Steve and Lorraine Kinsey were told the house near Haysborough could only be used as a holiday let. They took their appeal to a government planning inspector who has now decided in their favour. The council rejected their original application, saying it would set a precedent. They claim the floodgates could have been opened. For 13 years, Tesco has tried to open a store at Sheringham in Norfolk, and for 13 years, it has failed. Now it's trying again, with plans for something smaller. But there's still strong opposition from local traders. You can tell a lot about a town from its bags. 
In Sheringham, very few carry brand names. And that's because there are so many independent shops. Local traders have spent more than a decade fearing Tesco would end all that. And last year they even cracked open the champagne when an independent inquiry threw out Tesco's plans. But Goliath is back with new plans for a smaller, better designed store that's closer to the town centre. We're really encouraged by our local supporters. 1,500 people who this year have contacted us to say they want a Tesco in Sheringham. These people keep on encouraging us to fight on because they want the value and affordability and convenience that a Tesco can offer that they're not have getting in the town of Sheringham at the moment. So after 13 years, Tesco finally believes it has the right architects and the right plan at the right time. But there is one problem. This place. Sainsbury's has nipped in almost under the radar and snapped up the old Woolworths store. The Chamber feels that the Sainsbury's will answer our needs for a supermarket for showing them for the foreseeable future. Perhaps in 10 years' time, think about it again, but at the moment we think we're covered with Sainsbury's. We already have two supermarkets, Co-op and Budgeon, so we'll have three now, and we feel that's enough. The Tesco saga has hung over this town for 13 years, and it seems the battle is back on. Joel Mapp, BBC Look East, Sheringham.